Hello everyone, welcome to class number seven of my DSG models course. In the past, we have already talked about the following topics. And today we're going to be talking about how to get to the steady state of the model and get the impulse response functions. Before I proceed, I would like to let you know that there's a link in the description where you can get to the course outline. You will be able to buy the course material where I have included the do file, the slides, and also a paper where I have sold the math and have included some more information about these type of models. On the left hand side, you will also be able to go through my other courses in case you are interested. We have covered many things in Stata, eViews, and also how to write research papers using LaTeX with Overleaf. The topics that we are going to be talking about today is how to compute the steady state, how to verify the stability conditions, how to get to the variance covariance matrix, and then how to get the impulse response functions. So let's go now into Stata and compute the steady state. Here we are in Stata where we have left in the previous class. Remember, we have loaded the data, we had applied the HP filter, and we have determined the parameters values, and also we have written the dynamic equations of the models. So now to estimate the model and to get to the steady state, all you will need to do is to run, of course, first the constraints and parameters. There we are loading that, and then we are going to run all the dynamic equations. Here is going through the iterations, and we are getting to the results. Let me maximize the screen so then you can see better the answers. Now you can see better the results. This table is showing us the values of the parameters that we have assigned in our calibration. This is just the values as you can see that we assigned when we calibrated the parameters. And because they are calibrated, we are getting that the standard error says constraint. So as you know, these values are constrained because we have assigned a specific value under the calibration procedure. However, the raw is the persistence of the technology shock. Remember that we have mentioned in our previous slides that the technology shock was going to be estimated. Because this value is estimated, you're not only getting the coefficient value, but you're also getting the standard errors, the set value, the p-value, the confidence interval, and also the standard deviation of the shock. The standard deviation of the shock is going to be very important when we get to talk about impulse response functions. To compute the steady state values, you're going to type stat, steady, and then comma, and we're going to give the option compact. The reason we are doing this is because it's going to suppress the standard errors since we are not getting any values for those particular uh, options because we have that all our parameters are constrained, so we are not going to be getting much information from that. So here we get the table then. This table is going to help us to determine if we are going to take a look at, for example, consumption as a portion of as a proportion of output or investments yes, as a proportion of the output. So if you divide the consumption over the product, we have that in our economy, 80% is consumption. And if you divide, for example, uh, 0 0, 0 0.1, sorry, over, over 0.52, you're gonna get that then 20% of our economy is coming from investment. And also, if you take a look at H, remember that we had calibrated the leisure parameter, so H in the steady state would be 20. Remember, we are assuming then that 20% of the time is allocated to working, whereas the rest, the families are resting. So that's what we are doing basically. Remember, that's one of the parts of calibration when I had mentioned that some of the parameters were going to be calibrated to target a specific value in the steady state. Let's talk about the stability conditions. DSG models are subject to random shocks. In the RBC model, we know the shock is coming from the technology. So after a shock, the variables need to converge to a single point. That's what is going to determine if they are saddle path stable. The model can only be solved if it is saddle path stable. Otherwise, we cannot estimate the parameters. The command stat stable will provide us that information. And if the model is not calibrated properly, or for example, the initial values are off, then we can run into an error. So 
in case that your model is not stable, then this can give you an idea that probably the model is not properly calibrated or the initial values assigned to the model are not appropriate. In Stata, in the command, we are going to type stat stable. And here we are getting the values and it's telling us Stata that the process is saddle path stable. That's why we were able, of course, to get to steady state values. Now, if we would like to get the variance and covariance matrix, we can type stat covariance and then Stata is going to be computing for us the variance and covariance. So you can see that here is the variance of consumption and here is the covariance between consumption and the returns, consumption and the hours work, and so on. The same is going to be true for returns, hours worked, wages, investments, and also the product. Producing these values is going to be very helpful when we need to compare how the RBC model matches moments of the real data. So for example, we would be comparing the standard deviation of the model with the standard deviation of the real data, and then we can compare how those standard deviations um, you know, look like. If they are very similar, then our RBC model is going to be producing decent results. However, if the model is producing values that are very off from the data, from the real data, then we are going to be in the presence of, of course, an issue because our model cannot really replicate the moments of the real data. The last thing we are going to be talking about today is how to get to the impulse response functions. As you know, IRFs are going to trace the effect of a shock, in this case in productivity, on the rest of the variables. We are going to try to reproduce this graph. To get to the impulse response functions, the first thing we need to do is to create an active IRF file. So I'm going to type IRF set, and then you're going to give a name to that file. I would like to call it IRF. And now it's telling us we have an active file. The second step is creating the impulse responses. So I'm going to type IRF create. And this, what it's going to do is to store the impulse response functions. We need to type the following command. I do recommend to write this replace because any time that you're going to be computing the IRFs, this command is going to be replacing the old information. And then I would like to have an option for having 48 quarters ahead. So I'm typing step in parentheses 48. As you can see, it's telling us that the file has been updated. This is what I just mentioned and it's very important to be able to include this option in the commands here. Now we're going to get to the graph. I'm going to type IRF graph. Then you type IRF comma. You have to tell now Stata where are the impulse responses. We call it responses. Recall that we just created that. So I'm typing that responses. Now we have to specify with impulse what's the shock. The shock we know is the technology. That's why I'm putting an A. And then we have to specify which are going to be the responses. The responses are going to be the technology, output, investment, consumption, hours work, return, wages, and capital. I think I'm not missing anything. And the last option I'm going to recommend to write is PY options, open parentheses, and you're going to write Y rescale. So what this is going to do is to scale properly the y-axis so then you don't have impulse responses that are gigantic and then other ones that are looking small. It's going to basically all the numbers in the y-axis are going to be, um, let's say it's smooth. So I'm going to type now, hit at the enter. And we are getting now the impulse responses. Here is the graph. The way you have to read it is the following way. First goes the impulse and then goes the response. Impulse, response. As always, you can see that the impulse is being first a technology shock and then the rest of the control variables in the model are responding. So as you can imagine, as we have mentioned before, is that a technology shock or an increase in productivity of the firms is going to be increasing the output, right? That's the amount they are creating or the amount they are producing is increasing. And in order to produce more, they are going to demand more capital. They are going to demand more labor, 
Remember, age is the hours worked by the families that's going to have to increase. And because capital and the hours worked or the labor demand is increasing, then the salaries will increase and the returns on the capital are going to increase as well. Because the capital is increasing, investment, of course, also is increasing. We have to understand that uh, investment is basically what the families are doing when they get more income. There's a portion they are going into consumption. Another one is going into savings. They are investing more. If they have more capital, there's also going to be more depreciation. We need a higher investment rate to keep the capital constant. And so as a summary, when we have a productivity shock, what we are going to see is that the inputs are all going to increase in the, in the economy. That's going to be all for today. Remember, there is a link in the description in case you would like to buy the do file where you're going to be getting all the commands to produce all these results. And also, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel if you would like to get a notification anytime that I submit new content. In my next tutorial, we're going to be talking about how to produce some out of sample forecasts. So that's going to be all. Thank you very much for watching and take care.